Hello my dear students, welcome to my YouTube channel that's Concepts of Chemistry. So today I'm going to take your class on the topic called the fundamental units and the derived units as, is, as this topic is the very next part to the measurement of matter. So let us talk about the topic the fundamental units. Funda mental units what do we understand by the term fundamental units the units that can't neither be derived nor they can be resolved into any other unit is called fundamental units so what is fundamental units these are those units these are those units which can't be derived from any other unit nor it can't be resolved to any other unit after the fundamental units we must know the basic fundamental quantities the very basic fundamental quantities are mass length and time now to measure these fundamental quantities we have the fundamental units but we have different types of system of units we have different types of system of units the, there are three basic type of system of units, I mean sorry, four. The first one is, the first system is FPS. What does FPS stand for? F stands for foot. That's the unit of length. P stands for pound that's the unit of mass and s stands for second that's the unit of time but unfortunately this system is not followed now now the next system is mks what's mks here capital m stands for meter again that's for length k stands for kilogram again that's for mass and again s stands for second the third system of unit is c g s here c stands for centimeter G stands for grams and S stands for second different countries are following different types of sets of units so there are certain confusions in measuring some scientific data in one country to another country so that's why we had one organization i mean we have one organization called general we have one organization called general conference general conference of weights and measures this organization has given a set of units which are accepted internationally all over the world and we call it 
system international we call it system international or in short form it is called as si units so si units si units for different fundamental quantities we all know we all know we have three fundamental quantities first second the third the first one was length the second was mass the third one is time with the further we got more we got four more fundamental quantities like temperature fundamental quantity that's temperature the fifth one is electric current next is luminous intensity and the last one is quantity of matter so nowadays we are having this seven type of fundamental quantities and their units are as follows for length we used to have a unit that's called meter and it is it is denoted as small m for mass we are having kilogram it is represented as kg for time the unit is the second it is represented as s for temperature the unit is kelvin it is represented as kelvin in chemistry whenever you will have a numerical based on temperature you will take its unit always in kelvin ye i'm telling this thing in the very initial lecture when we go on some higher topics called the states of matter there i'm going to solve the different types of numerical and i'm mentioning that i will take temperature in the units of kelvin only not in degree celsius not in degree fahrenheit the next one is electric current its unit is ampere it is represented as capital a for luminous intensity we have a unit that's candela it is represented as cd and for quantity of matter we have a unit mole that is represented as mole now the next topic is derived units the next topic is derived units i am writing derived units so what is derived units the units derived from si basic units are called derived units these units are for the physical quantities such as area volume density etc i am going to mention again the whole table for all the derived units that me introduce you the definition the units that have been the units that have been derived from basic fundamental units that's called derived units let me take the table complete i am having the quantity the physical quantity i am going to mention here its formula and then here i am going to mention its units the very first physical quantity that's area what's the formula of area length into breadth here 
the length is again length is taken in meter the breadth of any system it is taken as again in meters so the unit comes out to be meter into meter it comes out to be meter square the second is volume the formula for volume is length into breadth into height here again length is taken in meters again breadth is taken in meters height is taken in meters we are going to multiply it meter into meter into meter the unit comes out to be meter cube so these are derived units which i am deriving from normal basic fundamental units let me take some another examples uh my third one is density the third one is density the formula for density is mass per unit volume now what's the unit of mass uh it's kilograms divided by what's the unit of volume that we have just derived here it's meter cube so the form uh, unit derived unit for the term density is kilograms per meter cube my fourth quantity it comes out to be velocity i am taking the fourth one to be velocity what's the formula for velocity it's distance covered per unit time now what's the units of distance what's the unit of distance is meter what's the unit for time at second my derived unit comes out to be meters per second now the fifth point the fifth quantity it comes out to be acceleration i am taking it to be acceleration what was the formula for acceleration it's velocity it's velocity per unit time now what's the unit of velocity it's meter per second i am putting it over here meter per second what's the unit of time again a second the unit comes out to be meters per second square the guys hopefully you are getting my points i am using the derived unit of velocity in acceleration i have used i have used the derived unit of volume in density so all these are derived from each other that's why they are called derived units let me take the another physical quantity uh sixth one let sixth one be i am taking to be force what's the formula for force that's mass into acceleration right so what's the unit of mass sm oh oh sorry it's kilograms what's the unit of acceleration it's meter per second square so the derived unit for acceleration comes out to be kilograms meters per second square let me take the another physical quantity the seventh one the seventh one i'm taking to be pressure that's my pressure what's the formula for pressure it's force acting per unit area now what's the unit of force what's the unit of force it's kilogram meters per second square when what's the unit of area it's meter square what's the unit of area it's meter square that's the very first point is in meter square and you have used this thing in i have used the unit of area in the seventh point meter square now it comes out to be kilograms per minute 
per second square. Hopefully you got the thing what I have done. I have cancelled this meter with the square is left with kilogram per second square divided by meter. That's why I have used the power of minus one on meters. My the another physical quantity comes out to be energy. The point is now energy. What's the formula for energy? It's force into distance. Now, what's the unit of force? Uh, the unit of force is again kilogram meters per second square and what's the unit of distance? Distance is meters. So the unit of energy comes out to be kilograms meter square per second square. Now the next point, the ninth one. Uh, let me, I'm taking the fundamental quantity to be power. Let me talk about power. What's power? It's energy per unit time. It's energy per unit time. So what's the units of energy? It's kilogram meter square per second divided by time. It's in second. So its unit comes out to be kilograms meter square per second cube. Okay. Uh, the another physical want to let it be like concentration. Concentration. It's number of moles per liter of solution is number of moles per liter of solution so this directly this unit comes out to be moles per liter so that's all with the that's all with the topic of fundamental units and the derived units now I'm mentioning one more topic over here. I'm just mentioning the another topic, the simple abbreviations, which will be very, very helpful to you all in your whole chemistry course. Rather, it will be helpful in your further degree programs and post graduation programs also. And you have to learn this thing. Uh, that's the topic is abbreviations abbreviations in power of 10 and it's a very important topic it will be very helpful in your numerical portions now the topic is I'm giving you one word deci what does deci stands for it's 10 to the power minus 1. The another one is centi. Can it be like centimeter cube? Uh, it comes out to be like 10 to the power minus 2. The third one is milli. The milli can be millimeters or it can be milligrams. It can be anything. The word specifically milli. The milli stands for 10 to the power minus 3. The fourth, the fourth one is micro. The micro stands for 10 to the power minus 6. The another one, the fifth, nano. The nano stands for 10 to the power minus 9. The next one, sixth one is pico. Pico stands for 10 to the power minus 12. The seventh one is femto. Femto stands for 10 to the power minus 15. Next is, eighth one is Atto. Atto stands for 10 to the power minus 18. The ninth one is 
zepto zepto stands for 10 to the power minus 21 the last one like 10th angstroms angstroms that stands for 10 to the power minus 10 so specifically i have taken here in all 10 the 10 raised to power something value which is in negative state that's in like 10 to the power minus 1 like 10 to the power minus 2 10 to the power minus 3 now i'm going to take the 10 to the power in plus state uh, the let me take an example uh, deca i'm taking let me take some another color i'm taking deca d e c a deca stands for 10 to the power just plus 1 hecto hecto stands for 10 to the power 2 kilo it can be kilograms it can be kilometers anything that stands for 10 to the power 3 i'm using the word mega mega stands for 10 to the power 6 i'm taking the word giga the giga stands for 10 to the power 9 now i'm taking peta Beta stands for 10 to the power 15. Exa, that's 10 to the power 18. Zeta is 10 to the power, that's 10 to the power 21. I'm taking U2, that's 10 to the power. 24 so here i have mentioned many but in practicality like when you will be you uh, when you all will be solving the numericals the mainly the things that you the mainly the abbreviations that will come across you is the first six for over here the angstroms like these are some important these are some important abbreviations that will come very commonly in your numerical problems. Here, kilo, mega, giga, deca, that's all. So, the abbreviations on which I have marked the star that are very, very common in your numerical problems. So, at least you must learn the abbreviations where i have marked this star like deci centi milli micro nano angstroms deca kilo mega giga you have to learn these abbreviations so i hope you uh, i hope you all liked my lecture today so please like subscribe and share my channel to the maximum extent so that every student of chemistry in this on this globe will take the advantage of my videos my lectures thank you to all stay blessed